They hung around in the first quarter. In the second quarter, Jalen Brunson went off. They laid down. They laid down to the point where at halftime they were like, all right, maybe we'll give it a go. And, oh, did they lay down after that? This was an, It's an embarrassing performance, and it's okay if you're upset. The other side is they're not focused at all, and that's what it is. They think they can show up and beat anybody any given night, and I want to credit New York because they're good right now. They lost one of their best players, and they're even better. What Jalen Brunson can do without the basketball has been impressive. Other players have been stepping up. But Brunson had a career night. I I know he's probably had bigger nights than this, 39 points. But he was elite. New York was elite. And the Celtics laid down because they knew it. They knew it. But I'm very curious how people feel about tonight's loss. 617-779-0985. 617-779-0985. I will say this. Sky's not falling. This was an effort thing, a focus thing. And it should be frustrating because what should motivate the Celtics? They lost at home in a Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Finals last year and lost in the Finals the year before that. They made massive trades. Their coach has been under adversity for years. Why can they not show up for games? What is it? And it, it's okay if you're on cruise control. Then don't play the guys. Play the bench who looked good last night when they pulled all the starters. Because they care. They care. The fans care, I'm sure. They're out there wondering, hey, Can you close this thing out two games to go? Can you show a little bit of life or a little statement before the season ends? I'm not going to sit here and crush them, but I do ask the question. If they're not focused at home against the New York Knicks who are playing well in probably their final game of the year with their starting five, you could certainly question if they're focused in the playoffs. I think they will be. I'm not going to that extent. But this just opens up the question marks. The Celtics have not played a meaningful game in a month. And they will not now for at least 10 more days. As it's hinting that maybe they might not play for another whole week. Joe Mazzula has to challenge the team to get them sharp before the first round matchup. And right now there's a lack of focus. I'm not here to crush him. I'm just calling it as it is. There's a lack of focus. The the lack of meaningful games has something to do with it. Can teams just turn on a switch? I'm sure there's conflicted fans out there. If you're not okay with this, I saw John Zanis write this earlier tonight. It's okay. But what gets them fired up? They were clearly fired up against Golden State when they played them on a Sunday and blew them out. I understand they're going through the motions. I get all that. Tonight was embarrassing. And if you don't want to be out there, Don't. I was very happy with actually what I saw from the bench. I'd rather that than laying down to the New York Knicks. So your thoughts at 617-779-0985. We need to do an ID here, Skaz, or we're all good to go. We can go to the phones and everything. All right. Hey, Skaz, am I overreacting? I'm just trying to call it like it is. It's it's okay if you're frustrated, and it's okay to question their, their motivation and I understand they haven't played meaningful games. I'm not going to overreact, but come on, two games to go. This was probably the last time they're all together, and they laid down the New York Knicks. Yeah, I think if there's anything to be upset about, it's just the effort tonight. They, they're just there's nothing for this team to play for. They're clearly ready for the playoffs. The Knicks are arguably you know one of the hottest teams in the league, and and they needed this one. 
And Max said it from the first quarter. They they wanted it more. They, they were trying harder, and the Celtics just didn't have it tonight. So, yeah, I mean, maybe that's a little concerning, but I, I this team is built for the playoffs, ready for the playoffs. There's nothing for them to play for tonight. So I'm not I'm not going to you know overreact to this one. I, I'm not going to either. I think this team knows that in 10 days, what are we at now, 7, 8, 9, 11 days, they'll be ready to go. The way they're playing right now, they better be. But a little disappointing with the lack of effort tonight. Your thoughts at 617-779-0985. We're on YouTube. I just uh, joined. You can chat in. I see Chuck in there, Prince Humperdinck. Hello. Silly things, Jim. The Celtics just don't care about winning these games. Yeah, just why are they out there then? Why are they out there? Get some cardio in before the playoffs. Did you see Derek White limping? He was limping at one point. Well, so that's the other thing, too, is if they treated this game like a playoff game and went all out, they'd be criticized for that, too. Ooh, I don't know. The, tonight, I see, I think tonight would have been the staple against a good team with a MVP candidate, shut it down the last two games, and that was their warm-up act. But if someone got hurt or something tonight, it'd be like, why were you trying oh, to Oh, yeah, why, 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 why are they you, out there? I agree. Exactly, yeah. I agree with that. And tomorrow night, you're getting nobody. They're back to a, back, no one's playing tomorrow. In, in a way, they're in a no-win situation. It's just disappointing because, like, I wonder what motivates these guys. It, it's a ring. That's it. That's all they're in it for this year, and that's all they should be in it for. I know they'll be ready. I know. Just they haven't played a meaningful game in a month. Which is, I mean, it's not their fault, but, like, I get I get what you mean. Like, everyone else is kind of ratcheting up for playoffs right New now. New York is. While the Celtics are kind of the just like, yeah. The Cavs have been fighting for how many weeks now? Yeah, there's a lot of teams. Milwaukee's hanging around. And they've had a couple of rough ones. Yeah, but, but they're yeah. still second. And they're, that that's number two spots big right now. And it, we've already locked up the play-in game, right? And I mean, if you really want to put a, a green teamer spin on this one, Joe. Ooh. Ooh, a the green Knicks, team or spin. The Knicks winning tonight ensures that they will not be on the Celtics side of the bracket. So the Celtics would avoid the Knicks until the Eastern Conference Finals. Good call. So if you're Do you Celtics think fan, this was a way to maybe this that that team's a tough matchup. And they are the best, you know, rebounding team in the league, you know, at yeah, times. They got smoked tonight the Celtics. It was embarrassing. So at I times. think if there's a team in the East, maybe the Celtics are, you know, game planning or scouting they want to avoid maybe what, it was the Knicks what makes that a green team spin Skaz? Uh, because it's just you know giving them an excuse giving oh, them really because they played like that they did they played like you said tonight we don't want to see these guys no let Jalen Brunson go off on national TV go ahead and let everyone question the Celtics skip Bayless I, I wrote I, why do I write back to the guys I don't know why but he just wrote back you know I'm not really sure about this Celtics team and I wrote back this was the game yeah, well, that's my thing, too, is, like, they've been so good this year. They have, like, one no-show when everything's all already wrapped up for the playoffs. I'm not going to freak out about it. Yeah, the games don't matter. I get it. But it's a little embarrassing. Play the guys. Nobody cares. I understand that the Celtics are in the G League Finals. Yeah, once that's over, we'll get Jordan <laughs> Walsh up here. We'll I get it. Get Kata back. They laid down tonight on national television. And got absolutely beasted on the boards. Beasted. If if, if you again, there's three sides of this one. There's the hey, don't worry about it. Their, their focus is the ring. Then there's the I don't know, man. I don't like what I'm seeing here. Then there's the other side where it goes there's nothing to play for. I I just don't like the feeling going into the playoffs. That's it. Don't like the feeling. Six one seven 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 nine zero ninety eight five. I know that the game was on TNT tonight. Barkley and all those guys. We'll get you the audio to that coming up in just a little bit. Um, let's talk to Chris. He's in Boston. What's going on, Chris? You're on the Sports Hub. What's going on, Joe? I went to the game tonight, um, season ticket holder. Only reason I went is because my buddy from New York, huge Knicks fan, wanted to go. And I think the Celtics just have the same mentality as me. as like, whatever. It's just a nothing game. doesn't mean anything. With that being said, though, I am worried about their mentality because I would take the field against them. I don't think they have the that mentality. I just don't think they're strong-minded and 
have what it takes to beat a Denver, a, a well, championship team well, like Denver. We'll find out. All the chips are on the table. This is the one thing I love about this year's team. This is why I'm betting them. This is why I support them in arguments. I think they're the best team in basketball. I think they're the deepest team in basketball. So on a talent level, they're the best team. The other thing is they play at a pace no other team can keep up with. And this is why I say front-running basketball, or if you want to use it in looser terms, Missoula ball. They win 78% of the time. I'll bet on that. But mental makeup, decisions late in games, IQ, things of that degree, their quest, their coach, that's all there. That's all true. It's valid. And this is what I mean by all the chips are on the table. All the chips are on the table. There's no excuse for this team not to make it to the finals. They should win despite their coach. Their two stars should be elevated. Their veterans playing around them will have better, easier roles. There's no, there should be no talent um, void for this team to make it to the final. It's um, uh, it's all mental. It's all preparation. It's all execution. Oh, the Red Sox. Oh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But tonight was a no-show. Tonight was an absolute no-show. It was a laydown. And to the caller he just called, hey, man, let's go to the game tonight. Not much to play for. Let's get out of the house, crack a couple beers, go home. The Celtics had the same mentality tonight. Cheers. I agree with you. 617-779-0985. I'll tell you what's going on over at Fenway Park in just a little bit because I'm sure people will be leaving that game now and getting in their cars, and you'll be able to call into the show tonight as we're here until midnight at 617-779-0985. I see a couple of people on Twitter writing back uh, to me, at Joey Murr, meaningless game, says Chuck Olson. Uh, if they play like this during the playoffs, please don't show up. I don't. I know they don't need these games, but, man, they suck. Celtics had nothing to play for. So those are just some of the comments that are coming in uh, via Twitter. I see some people on the YouTube as well. I got the Celtics over the field this year. Are the Sox blowing it again? (laughs) Why play and risk injury just to get crushed? That was my point. Don't play them. Uh, We got Mike. He's in Boston. What's going on, Mike? You're on the Sports Hub. How are we doing tonight? How are you doing? Good. So me and my girl went to the game tonight. Mm. Celtics were soft. Tatum soft. The Knicks brought it right at him. I don't. I don't know if the Celtics have what it takes. Yeah, my only thing is you you watched it tonight. They they weren't they weren't bringing it. I, I will tell you this: they absolutely beasted the Celtics. They beasted them and I completely out rebounded them thirty five to twenty six tonight. But it was evident, especially on the offensive rebounds. And how do you let Josh Hart get fourteen rebounds? Sixteen actually. They, they're tough. The Knicks are tough. The Knicks are tough down low. The, Brunson, Brunson is the MVP candidate. He okay. is legit. He's good, and they're better. I'm not saying they're better without Julius Randle. They're not. But the fact that they let him kind of run off screens and not handle the ball and let DiVincenzo and Hart get involved. Uh, uh, OG Ananobi on the side has been playing really well, and Bogdanovich has been good off the bench. New York's a quality team, man, and they're a tough team. And they're a defensive-minded team. But to call in and say Tatum saw, dude, they were not boxing out tonight. They knew they were off tomorrow. They laid down to New York on national television. Brunson was too much. They didn't want to physically go through the motions tonight. And you know what? Not a great sign. Also, still not worried. 617-779-0985. We're here until midnight tonight. And probably should just update you on what's happened with the Red Sox. I, I don't even know if I should tell them. Should I just tease it for a little bit? Th- this tonight was a clinic. I'm more concerned about what's happening with the Red Sox tonight than the Celtics. You agree with that one, Skess? 100%. That, that's like, 
You know why? Because the Celtics are a bad baseball team, and the Celtics are, are not you know, a bad basketball team. Wait, say that again. Say that again. The Red Sox the are Red- a bad <laughs> baseball team. Sorry, I, I got confused. I thought the Celtics were a bad baseball team. I got confused for a second. The Red Sox are a bad baseball team. The Celtics are a good baseball, uh, good basketball team that played bad. The Red Sox are a bad baseball team that played bad. Make sense? <laughs> we got to go to break. Let's line them up. You're coming home from the game. How do you feel tonight? How you feeling? How you doing? 617-779-0985. Skaz is here. I'm Joe Murray. We're also on YouTube. Go find us there at The Sports Hub. We're here until midnight tonight. I'm Joe Murray on The Sports Hub. More Joe Murray coming up on The Sports Hub.
and coming out playing tonight, Chuckster. Yeah, let me say this, though. I, you know, you, 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 Shaq asked me earlier if Tatum and Brown gonna, should play. If they're going to play like that, they shouldn't play. I'm going to tell you something happened to me when I was in the playoffs one year. The year we made it to the finals, we had the best record in the NBA, and we shut it down the last two weeks of the season. It took us two rounds of the playoff to get it back. We lost the first two games at home to the Lakers. And, like, I, I, I've always said to myself, it had nothing to do with us losing to the Bulls in the finals, but I'm saying – I've, I regret it to this day that, like, yo, man, you play to the end of the season. If you're going to play. Now, if you don't go in, the, if you, if like, like Shaq said, he wouldn't play him, don't play him. But if you're going to go out there and half ass it, like they did in Milwaukee that night where they didn't shoot a free throw, like, like they won the entire game but didn't shoot I a know. free throw. And then they come out tonight and they're just kind of going through the motions. <clears throat> I know, I know they're going to finish with the best record, but, man, you just can't turn it off. Charles Barkley. I want to. Should I do my Charles Barkley impersonation? Terrible. Celtics are terrible. Uh, he makes comments about him going to the finals. I want to say it was Phoenix Suns. Probably took the final two weeks of the season off, and it took him two rounds to get going. And that's what you know catapulted them to the finals. You know, I think back to that team. I love that team. Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley's. Um, Charles Barkley, Cedric Cedric Sabalas on that team. They have a couple other guys. Tom Chambers, maybe. I have to look back on that team. Thunder Dan Marley. Anyways, I I was thinking about that team recently, and maybe they were tired heading into the finals because of some of the heavy lifting they did earlier on. Um, but it, it's a little concerning hearing that from a Hall of Famer. And hearing that, he's seen this before. He watches that before. Listen, the Celtics haven't done any themselves any favors to defend them, or you know, oh, you know, they're like saying they're soft is one thing. I will, I will call you out if you want to tell me Jason Tatum soft. I'll call you out. Yeah, it's a lazy take. It is. I do tonight, Skaz, I think they played soft because they didn't care. They got out rebounded too by a tougher team. I just don't think they wanted to fight tonight. And and, and fine. Fine. But the way you played in Milwaukee and you show up tonight like this, this is what brings questions to the team. I like the take about though, avoiding New York. A potential matchup with New York. That's interesting. The soft comments, though, I'll always. But, yeah, they haven't made it easy on themselves. They could. They could have blown doors off every team, played to the final minute. But, again, you have Porzingis on this team. Drew Holiday, who's dealt with some stuff. Again, I saw Derek White limping tonight. Jalen still got the hand. Tatum's got the wrist. Tatum you always got to worry about. What if Horford, something happens with him? What if somehow Sam Hauser, and I know he... People don't want to say he's a part of this. I disagree. Just like Peyton Pritchard tonight. They can give you solid minutes when you need offense. That's why they're there. The team has an identity. It's to shoot the threes. Those guys shoot the three well and fast. Tonight they laid down. They didn't want to fight against a team that was tough playing for something. That's it. But I do want to get into the Red Sox in a little bit because woohoo, boy. But you know what? Let's hear from Joe Missoula because you know the, you know the uh, media is going to be out there. Joe, you know, tell us about your motivation. Let's just hear a little Missoula after the game tonight. They killed you on the offensive rebounds in the mm-hmm. first half. Why is that? It's been a trend even before you know in the last couple of weeks. What can you do to change that? And I know the effort level is not going to be one hundred percent when you have nothing to play for. But did you like the effort level in the first half? Um. I did not like the effort level in the first half, but like you said, I think it's just a tough spot to be in. You know, I think uh, 
Um, I thought our guys have handled that as best as they could. And you ran into our last two games against two teams that are highly, highly desperate. And um, as much as we want to be able to simulate that, that's just not the position that we're in. But uh, I actually don't mind uh, the result of the last two games because I think that's important. Like, um, you know, going in with a bunch of wins and feeling good about yourself isn't uh, any better than, um, you know, having a little bit of a bloody lip uh, because of a game. So. Um, they've done the best they could over the course of this stretch, however it's been a week and a half. But no, I didn't like it in the first half. Hmm. So does it, the the let's just use the analogy that he did. Playing bad the last couple of games isn't the equivalent of having a bloody lip going into the playoffs. So to, to your point, guys, why play to potentially get hurt or be physical? to sh- have strain starting the playoffs when the games don't matter anyways. He, pr- You know what's weird? I feel like Joe Mazzulla protects the team a little too much. I know what he's trying to say. I get it. Will he be hard on them in the playoffs if they played like this? What would he say after the game? Is he going to throw analytics at us? Because tonight he said rebounding and toughness. That's what he said. Yeah, for me, I, I I know this is probably unpopular, but I don't really care what Missoula says to us or you know how he acts in the post game. I obviously I don't know Missoula well, but we get glimpses of him and stuff like that. You know that if this happened in the playoffs, he would be tearing into those guys. He he's pretty animated as it was. He was very animated in the first half. He got into it with the guys, got into it with a ref. So yeah, I just think this is. What does he gain if he, you know, loses his mind on the team tonight? None of them are going to play the rest of the regular season. It's a bad effort. It's a poor effort. It's a bad look at home. You know, people pay, you know, exorbitant amount to go to these games. It's it's a bad look, all that. But they're the number one team in the East. They're the number one team in the NBA. So I, I don't expect Missoula to, you know, crush them after this game. Not this game. I'm talking about playoffs. Yeah, I think without a doubt, but I don't, I don't know. want. I just don't want to hear it like this after a playoff loss. But see, I don't care what he says to us. I, it, what do you say to the team? How do you, you know, you think Sam Cassell is going to sit by and let these guys skate in the playoffs? I do not. No, absolutely not. Sam Cassell is going to be, you know, maybe Missoula is not the one that tears into it. Maybe it's Cassell. Maybe it's Charles Lee. But yeah, I mean, if they play like this in the playoffs, then yeah, feel free to panic. Feel free to... There won't be an overreaction. It'll be justified if people are freaking out after a performance like that in the playoffs. So I just... Yeah, there's not a... Uh, is Tonight's a, a lose-lose for the Celtics. Lose-lose. Ho-hum. Back at it tomorrow night. And it'll be the bench tomorrow night. You know what? I, I, I kind of like watching them come back tonight. I, I, I never... I felt like if, it was gonna, if you're going to play like this, don't play. If you're going to play like this tonight, I don't want to watch. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had to work the game. So that's why I'm I'm trying to be objective, unbiased. I'm trying to get both takes here. There's the reality side that this team wants to start the playoff and be healthy for not this Sunday, next Sunday. Report, reportedly, kind of. Uh <laughs> Is that, is that I official? think it's all but locked in because the Celtics will get the play-in teams. That final play-in game to determine seeding will be Friday night. They would not make that team play a back-to-back and play them Saturday. So I would imagine you get Bruins Saturday, Celtics Sunday. Okay. So not this Saturday, Sunday. No, no, next. Next Saturday, Sunday. So if you're looking ahead on your calendars, that would be the weekend of 420! Right? Yeah. 420 and 421. Yeah. All right. Your thoughts at 617-779-0985. We're on the YouTube tonight. I'll read some of your chats here. A couple of guys in here. Ooh, some people think that he uh, would flip. Joe, is Jim Murray your brother? No. Same last name, though. He grew up in Melrose, and I grew up in Hyde Park, and people who live in those towns would never have met. Although I have been to Taunton before and Rainham and all that before, I guess. But I probably would have met you at like Lorenzo's or the 24 hour McDonald's. Like, where else do you like meet people out there? Or at the Burger King at 495? The Staples. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. 
or at a Hooters. There you go. Dead him. <laughs> Dead him, baby. Again, for those though who don't know the story, because we haven't done it in a while, where did I meet you for the first time, Skaz? That would be at a Hooters. Met Skaz for the first time at a Hooters. Still a great story. You still do it every year. It's, yeah, I haven't done it in a while. Oh, you didn't have, go this year? What do you mean? Like, don't you? Oh, I, like went, a, I went again this yeah, year. Yeah, you're right. It's a right? tradition right? unlike any other, like the Masters that's going on right now, which will give you who the leader is at the moment. And what happened over at Fenway Park tonight? We might need a blooper reel for this. A chunky reel? I, I was, you know, it's funny when you were. So, Skaz worked the game tonight. He's in the control room all by himself all night. He's working the game. He's getting clips. He's running the YouTube. He's answering the phones. I mean, it's, a, it's just us here tonight. So I handle it in here. He handles it in there. But I was thinking of what could we do tonight to really explain how bad, how bad it was over at Fenway Park tonight. Like, you need to hear what happened because it was so laughable. Like, I, I don't know if I could have made this up. Skaz was not working as a waiter. <laughs> Good one. Acid bath wrote that in. Jerry, what's up, Joe? Uh, yes, Skaz was working on our street team, which we have here at 98 Five the Sports, who I was out with earlier today. Uh, we were at Hurricane O'Reilly's for the Miller Lite Papa Shot competition. And... We've done it every year, but there were 11 contestants who were already registered for this chance to shoot a half-court shot, and if they hit it, they would have won $50,000 courtesy of Miller Lite. And the guy who was the, the winner last year showed up again. I believe his name was Brett. So I don't know if he hit it or not. I feel like we would have heard if he did win. I told him to call in to tell us about it later. But I was with the street team tonight, guys. They were all there. I met everybody. I think I met every salesperson. That, that ever, this thing, people showed up. Papa Shot? Who doesn't want to join a Papa Shot competition? What a great idea. Like, we have the golf tournament here? Nah. I want the Papa Shot. That's what I want. All right, we'll get you Sports Up headlines here. I'm Joe Murray on 98.5 The Sports Up. Sports Up headlines. Let's start with the Celtics, who fell to New York 118-109 tonight. They laid down, but they go up 39 points to Jalen Brunson.
right back here, 98 Found the Sports. I'm um, Joe Murray. Uh, if you want to react about the Celtics loss tonight to the Knicks, 118 to 109, feel free, 617 779 0985. Also, coming off the, the performance against Milwaukee, it's a little concerning. Uh, I'm on the side of they don't care right now. They are they are going through the motions. And tonight, they went up against a buzzsaw and didn't want to fight. Why should they? Some people would say. You know, others will say we paid is to watch these teams. Um... I think there's two more games left. They want to be healthy, and they're ready to go for next Sunday. But the Celtics haven't done themselves any favors whatsoever. And I have a couple of uh, quotes, or actually numbers I wanted to give you. Mention not playing meaningful, meaningful games in the month. They're not going to do it for another nine or ten days. So I do think Joe Mazzulla should challenge his team to be sharp. I mean... Call me naive, but you have to actually ask these guys for that. But I do think Joe Missoula does need to be control of the players. I, I do think so. Um, It's okay to not be okay with the results for the Celtics over the last couple of games. So you're going to hear criticism from the media. You're, you just heard it tonight from, and Barkley wasn't even being critical. He was trying to give his experience. Hey. Phoenix, we made the finals. We went. But it took us two rounds to get going. So he's kind of showing the, I've seen this before. The rebounding difference has been just really a bullseye. If you really want to look at what's gone wrong with the Celtics of late, the rebounding differences over the last four games, in all losses, by the way. I got these from Greeny. Uh, the loss that they had against Atlanta, they were out-rebounded 44-38. to They gave up 15 offensive rebounds. The other game against Atlanta that they lost, out-rebounded 53-43, 17 offensive rebounds. Against Milwaukee the other night, 49-38, 10 offensive rebounds. Tonight, I mean, they got slammed. It was like 50-30. to They allowed 15 offensive rebounds. So I just I look at that and toughness, but I also do they care. Do the games matter? And I will tell you right now, both those Hawks games, the Milwaukee game and the New York Knicks game, it really didn't matter. But if you want to point to something that's been a big difference, there it is, the rebounding advantage. Yeah, I think that's definitely a concern for this team. They're, they haven't been a really a great rebounding team all year. But I also think you're going to see a lot more of the, the double bigs in the playoffs. You're going to see more of Porzingis and Horford. Tatum and Brown are both going to have, you know, more of a will to get rebounds and stuff like that. So it's not a major concern for me. And the Barkley thing, too, like I, I get his comments, but also in classic Charles fashion, he says we stopped playing two weeks before the playoffs started. I mean, we're we're two games away from the end of the season. I wouldn't call that two weeks. And the Suns made it to the finals that year, <laughs> he said in the clip. So it only really affected them in the first round. So, yeah, I mean, if you're going to be worried about that first round matchup, whether it's Miami or Philly, whoever it'll be, the Celtics should handle that easily, regardless of who it is. Yeah, it's okay to be frustrated. I, I'm going to bet my money on them. I know it's easy to say, I'm taking the field, right? It's easy to say it. Because if you come up right, you're going to say you were right. And then if they come back and do it and you took the field, you're going to be like, yeah, see, they should have done it. Riding the fence. I'm not a fence rider. We should have, like, remember the Rough Riders? DMX and crew? There's the fence riders. People who will just take the field to bet against the Celtics. I think they're the best team. Right now, <laughs> the way they're they're playing certainly shows a lack of care, a lack of um not execution. I I would say the they're bored. They're ready to get this thing going cuz I am too. 617-779-0985. Lucas is in Waltham. Hey Lucas. Hey Joe, uh first time, long time, love the show. Thanks, bro. Um 
So I agree with uh, most of your takes, like everything, but um, I think they really probably should have sat most of the guys tonight, you know, if they were going to come out and play this way, because I just don't want to see them get into some bad habits and, and then playoffs come around and uh, and then they bite them in the butt, you know? So I'll just listen. Oh, oh I, I agree with that, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate the call. I, I said the same thing. And when I saw them lay down heading after the halftime, I said, all right, enough of this thing. Well, uh, we're saving some Red Sox stuff. We, we we really want to make this one good. Can't make up what happened tonight. It, it's what happens to bad teams. I, I here I am. I'm work. We're working the Celtics game, but I'm in awe of what's happening at Fenway Park. And I had a realization tonight. I don't know why it took tonight. Not sure why, not sure what happened, but do, do you ever just get like this epiphany in your brain when you realize just something isn't right or doesn't isn't going to work out anymore? I'm starting to I'm starting to feel that way regarding uh, regarding someone on the Red Sox. That's a big market tease there. Uh, what, what can, you, can we get a Masters update in a little bit, Skaz? Can we work on that too? We'll go get a master's update, and we'll take one more call before we hit the break. Uh, Jackson Worcester, what's up, Jack? Hey, now. I was just at the game. I uh, watched what just went down, and I think it's a combination of how the Celts get too tied up with the referees. In the early part of the game, they lose their heads, and it becomes a battle against the refs, not against the Knicks. And it was something to watch Brunson play, man. He is crazy good. Oh, oh, he's and good. He was he was he hella he was hella good, good tonight. All star level. Yeah, he was hella good. I agree with you. All yeah, right, well, that's all I have today. Yeah, what's I'd going like on? Wait, stuff wait, you, you, you guys uh, you getting you a little know. you getting a little late night Worcester eats tonight? Yeah, I'm gonna be heading back right now. Probably grab some McD's or maybe some uh, some uh, Burger King on the way home. Ooh. I'm on the Mass Pike right now. I just nice. figured I'd call in because I, I was in a that Auburn stretch, man. You guys get some heavy hitters right off there at Route 20. Yes, sir, we do. You know? Represent. All right, man. Well, you enjoy your night. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate you, uh, you taking you, the call. You know what? You appreciate it as well. Thank you. Yes, guys, that when you get off the pike, you got to go through Auburn to get to Worcester. And man, that's a there's a lot of options up there. There's a lot of good options right there. Tonight, you know, this would be a night I'd, I'd eat my feelings. Not not so much because uh, you you'd be upset about your team. It's just the fact that you got to get hung. You now need to bulk up for the playoffs. <laughs> you need to get your feelings in order before the playoffs. As I'm watching CJ McCollum hit big shots after big shots, we talked about him last night, right? Makes almost the same money as Drew Holiday. Oh, speaking of that, one more one more take. I I just I got a lot tonight. Anyone notice Derek White's performance? Oh, we pulled the park score. Did anyone notice Derek White besides him limping tonight? This is the performance from Derek White. 29 minutes, one for five from the field. A minus 29. Two rebounds, two assists, one steal. Uh, had three fouls, two points. I just, the Drew Holiday signing, does it have an effect on Derek White? I see Skaz, you already shook his head, no. If you don't like my take, at least I'm getting it into the atmosphere. I'm just getting it out there. Hey, I heard that somewhere. Maybe the, yeah, it was me. Also, Drew Holiday, the $135 million man. 29 minutes tonight, three for seven from the field, one for four from downtown, five rebounds, two blocks, two turnovers, seven points, a minus 26. So there you go. Just wanted to float that into the existence of life. Whether it's a bad take or not, it's a take. And I got many more of them. Let's uh, find out. Let's get an update on the Skazsters. I'm just trying to make it stick, guys. 
I know there's already the Mazsters, but the Skazsters I kind of like. I don't know why. I mean, if you got another one for me, let me know in YouTube. All my all our YouTube listeners. I like the Skazsters. It sounds different than golf. 617-779-0985. Here until midnight tonight, I'm Joe Murray on the Sports Hub. You're listening to Joe You're Murray listening to on Joe Murray on 98.
Joe Murray. You want to give us a uh, Masters update today, Skazsters? Yeah, Joe. So uh, day one of the Masters, always, always one of the best days of the year. A little delayed this morning with the uh, weather delay. So the guys that did get off in the morning had a little bit of an easier go at it, softer course. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, obviously the story of the day, seven under. Uh, but for me, <laughs> and anyone that's hoping this is a golf tournament this weekend, Scotty Scheffler, just another matter of fact, six under, one shot behind Bryson. I think everyone, you know, even if you even if you bet on Scotty at you know plus three fifty, plus four hundred, whatever he was, I think you're still hoping that it's somewhat of a tournament this weekend. And watching Scotty play like that, that's that's my biggest fear as a golf fan is that he's gonna just run away with it again. Um, but yeah, there's a couple other big names that played well. Tiger was one under uh, last I checked. I'm not ex- uh, sure. I don't even think he finished his round. Uh, but he, he actually looked all right. Obviously, the walking tomorrow will be the real uh, test for Tiger because he's going to have to play more than 18 holes. But Danny Willett, a guy coming off an injury that's won a Masters before, playing his first round in like six months or something, shot four under, hanging around fourth place. Uh, Corey Connors, the Canadian, two under, a good round. Uh, you know, a live guy and Joaquin Neiman, who everyone was hyping up two under pretty solid round. Uh, Will Zalatoris, who's finished second at the Masters before two under hanging around. So, yeah, pretty good day all around. I mean, Rory didn't play great one under, but it's there's such a, a, a bunch of guys at, you know, even par one under that anyone hanging around there, I would say, is still in it. There's this stat that the last like. I, like nine of 10 or something like that. Masters winners have been tied 11th or worst after the first day. But with so many guys left out on the course, it's kind of tough to judge. Like Tiger's one under through 13, tied for 17th. Sergio's even. Justin Thomas even. Xander Shoffley battled back to shoot even par. So yeah, I, I, w- I would call it a, a pretty good day, round one. But the, the main story being Bryson and Scotty. Scotty just continually to play well. Uh, if you're any other golfer, you know, in this event, you're hoping his wife goes into labor. <laughs> that was why I kind of avoided it there. I avoided betting on that one tonight. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, sir. I have a nice little graded Beckett card that I have of his that I'm hoping if he has a good weekend here. That value will go up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Bryson's an interesting character. Anyone that's a golf fan knows that. He's had uh, some interesting takes on Augusta National in the past, so I'm sure they're probably not thrilled he's uh, leading leading right now. But he's a guy that you know historically does play well early in majors, so I'll be interested to see what he does uh, the next couple of days. But, Scotty, it's, it's Scotty's tournament to lose. Just showing up six under, matter of fact. Made it look easy as he always does. So, yeah, he's probably down to like minus one hundred already or something like that to win the tournament. All right. Anything else we should look for for tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow's just going to be a lot better weather wise from what I was seeing. So you're going to get, you know, they're going to cram in some golf tomorrow. Guys like Tiger are going to be playing, you know, twenty four holes, twenty three holes. So that'll be a real test for him. And just can Tiger make the cut? Can he set the record for Masters cuts made in a row? He's he's tied right now with a couple other guys. So if Tiger makes the cut, I think that's a win for Tiger. All righty. There's your Masters update with Skaz. Anything else tonight? Uh, BC up 4 nothing. Oh, wow. Big boy, huh? That one is over. So everyone that was hoping for a... BU BC National Championship. You are going to get a BC uh, Denver, I believe it was National Championship. That's right. But I, I, I know people were hoping for the hometown, but the Denver goal. I'll just say this: I was a softy. I want to pick on the kid. He, he played really well all night, so you hate to see it. I mean, it was, it wasn't exactly reminiscent of BU's uh, unfortunate loss to Providence, where there was a really soft goal let in, but there were shades of it tonight. Yeah, that was uh, that was, uh, that was uh, a softy. It's tough to lose on that one. I will, uh, I will say that very tough to lose on that one. All right, we'll get to the top of the hour here. See you guys line up on the phone lines. We'll get to you uh, here as well as we're here until midnight tonight. Let's get a look at the sports of headlines. Easy, easy, easy. Bus from the town, Fair Tire Studios, home of 
the Celtics, Bruins, Revs, and Patriots. Boston's home for sports is 985 the Sports Hub. He's leading the group station. Sports Hub headlines. All right, Celtics lose tonight to New York, 118-109. They have two games remaining, one tomorrow night, but Jalen Brunson, a big night, 39 points. Red Sox lose 9-4 tonight over at Fenway Park. It was a disaster, and we'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. At the Masters, Bryson DeChambeau, a one-stroke lead right now. He's 7-under, but it was suspended due to rain. We just gave you a recap there in the Scasters uh, for you as well. And in hockey... BC, Michigan, right now in action. BC up 4 0. Earlier today, it was Denver 3 2 over BU in overtime. Headlines are brought to you by Safety Insurance, providing comprehensive coverage for your auto home and business. Ask your independent agent about safety. I'm Joe Murray. Your next update is in 30 minutes. Boston's best sports talk is an app for that. Download the Sports Hub app for loads of stuff absolutely free. Connect with the shows, get podcasts, and more. Get it where you get your apps or at 98.5 Sports Hub. This guy's here as well. We'll get into the Red Sox. We'll hammer them. But some things happened in that game tonight that I think really need to be magnified. And there's some other concerns even before there was a pitch tonight. Uh, but we've been reacting to the Celtics, who lose tonight to New York. But you heard from Joe Mazzula after the game. Made an uh, analogy. Rather walk into the playoffs than walking in with a busted lip. I get it. I get the metaphor. I get it. But they laid down. And in back-to-back games. And they're backing into the playoffs. Phil is in Marlboro. Phil, you're on the sports hub. What's up, man? Hey, Joe. I want to talk about uh, Joe Mazzula. Yeah. What you What you think of What do you think of Joe Mazzula? Um. So I'm, I'm thinking. Um. It's. I'm not really worried about the um, regular season, but um, the playoffs. Uh, how he's going to manage the team. I know last year a lot of people didn't think he managed, especially timeouts correctly. Um. So. I feel like the team has enough to win it, but I don't know how he's going to do in the playoffs. I feel like, I I don't know, sometimes when I listen to him talk, when they win, they're, he's extra cocky. When they lose, he's extra defensive of all the questions that people will get. So what do you think? I wish they had maybe a little more experienced coach with this. The, the play of this team is very good. I wish they had a more experienced coach to go with it. So I'm just wondering what you think about that. Well, I don't, if they lose this year, it's not because of Joe Mazzula. I'll start there. Do I think he's ready? I don't, I really don't know, but they're, they've supported him very well. Like I think Sam Cassell handles the defense. I think Charles Lee really handles the offense and Joe Mazzula looks at the analytics. I don't think coaching should be the issue for this team this year. Now, the one thing I think Joe Mazzulla may have an issue with and some other coaches is when to save the players from themselves. There are times. Dribbling 19, getting the ball over half court, dribbling 23 times like Jalen Brown. Those are just a few examples of what I mean. But I think he can coach. I think he's pretty good out of the timeout. I think he knows how to find certain matchups. I also think he's pretty transparent about this is who they are. They believe that they can win this way. They're going to challenge whenever you bring up facts because they look at the numbers. He said it himself. This is who we are. It's true. This is who the Celtics are. They're a team that likes to shoot the three, transition basketball with layups, and playing defense, and really not getting into a three-point con- uh, contest with the other team. Rebounding has been an issue. That's the one thing I'll look at, and I, w- and I wanted to just kind of stress this one more time. Rebounding the last four games. Atlanta, they were out-rebounded 44-38 to and crushed on the offensive boards. The other game against Atlanta, 53-43, 17 offensive rebounds. Versus Milwaukee, 49-38, 10 offensive rebounds. Tonight, They gave up over 50 rebounds to New York. 
And just shooting the basketball from the floor, the Celtics are 63 for 155. Not good. 40% from the floor, 30% from three. They're 25 of 82 from three. And maybe they've avoided New York in the first round. Or sorry, in any of the first or second rounds, uh, they could see them in the third round. But now it's starting to set up that maybe Philadelphia could be a first-round opponent. And I, I look ahead to that because there's a healthy Joel Embiid over there. I think it'd be a tough matchup. They played the Celtics tough this year. Maybe this is what they wanted. Maybe they wanted to lay down in New York to have them chase maybe the two seed and try to avoid them until they had to in the play in the in the third round. Maybe that's the team that they're looking at is we don't want to play them, but they're choosing the other teams. I don't know because they've laid down the last two nights. They certainly did today. They gave zero effort. We shouldn't care about it, but there has to be a reason behind it. There just has to be. And I'll throw it into the atmosphere one more time. The man who made a lot of money getting an extension yesterday was Drew Holiday. And tonight he went three of seven from the field, seven points. He was a minus 26. The great defender could not defend Jalen Brunson tonight. I'm not calling him out. I just wanted to bring up the fact that a guy who just signed a big contract, who's going to be into his late 30s, had seven points tonight on three of seven shooting and one for four for downtown in 29 minutes. Not a good look. And really, I think it's a worse look for Derek White who's next up for a big-time contract. Does he look at it and say, well, they maybe they chose Holiday over me? They have these certain bird rights with Derek White where they can give him any money they want, and it really doesn't hurt them against the cap. The problem is is that with all the new rules that are coming on in the uh, with the apron and, and all the NBA roster stuff, he gets a 30% increase in pay. His money could go anywhere from 160 to 230 million. Now you're going from a 26 million dollar guy to a over 30. I wonder how he felt about the Drew Holiday signing. I know they can get it done. I'm just we're all human. When the guy next to you gets paid, don't you start licking your chops? Right, guys. Someone else got some money. Where's mine? It's my money, and I want it now. So you might not like my take, but you know what? I am curious, and if I ever had a chance to talk to Derek White, which I have before, at an ADV's once. (laughs) Saw him there in the bathroom, actually. It was after they they lost to Cleveland uh, two years ago. I was like, ah, tough one last night, man. He's like, I know. But I'd ask him, hey, man, how did you feel after the Drew Holiday signing? Starting to lick your chops? Starting to sharpen your pencil? Because you had two points tonight in 29 minutes on one of five shooting with three turnovers. Asking for a friend. Um, Whoa, Polly and Newton. Hey, Polly. Hey, Joe. How you doing? Uh, I'm just getting back from the boxing, the team boxing. What happened the, tonight? The Boston Butchers. So the Boston team Butchers? Great time. So the Revere Boxing Outreach, what is what is this Revere Boxing? You tell me. Uh, all right, come on. Hey, it's uh, three minutes, one round. They just absolutely throw a haymakers at each other. It's insane. It's is, gonna, it, is it like uh, safe it's boxing? New box. This is new. It's the, it's the, new, it's the new era. Who, who's ta- who's talking to me right now? You two of you guys talking That's to me? Chris. That's Chris. That's Chris. I'm Paul. Paulie's back. Hey, Paulie Paulie's and Chris. Back. Like, what are you guys? Like a traveling <laughs> act or something? What's going on here? Yeah, I just put a good word in for the boxing tonight. Hey, we we play. Play. Hey, meet Paul Sub. Yeah. Oh, where'd you get to meet Paul Sub? Oh, yeah. Hey, you want to no, get where? a good piece to go to Stella's Pizza in Watertown? Stella's? Oh, yeah. Oh, I like, yeah. I like Stella's. It's a good spot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Joe. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Tell me about man. the boxing. Go ahead, Butchie. <laughs> did you get any of that besides the meatball sub? Come on, guys. Did you get any of that? Boxing Revere three rounds, right? I picked that up. Chris and Polly. 
You nailed it, Joe. Okay. I, I don't know what else they said. That was kind of wild. Does that happen often on the show where we have somebody calling but somebody else is talking? I feel like it that does ha- seem to happen. I feel like I don't hear that on any other show. Like, I never hear two people talking. Chris, Polly, Meatball Subs. <laughs> that could go on a t shirt. Revere. Stella's Pizza. That got brought up. Remember? There you go. Trying to re- recall that whole entire conversation. Hmm. Oh, we're here until midnight. And the Red Sox lost tonight. You shouldn't be surprised. But it happened in just glorious, beautiful, just extremely bad baseball. All I ask for from you, the Red Sox, is the bare minimum. What I mean by the bare minimum is hit your cutoff, man. On double plays, make sure you touch the bag. And when you feel the ball, don't throw it into the first base stance. Don't let a wild pitch go by you. And when you have no more position players and you're the catcher, don't get thrown out of the game. Also, one more. If you have gone out from the bullpen to the mound to start the inning, and you hear the closer's music and seeing him running into the field, what do you do? (laughs) I feel like the what do you do? It's a chunky. Uh Uh-oh, you got a chunky. What do you do? You got to figure out what it is you do. (laughs) What do you do? We got ourselves a chunky tonight. This thing was this is wild. Uh we'll we'll let you hear it all. And you can react to it at 617-779-0985. Did you hear about Tom Brady too tonight? If you didn't, I'll tell you at the end of the show. 985 the sports up. More Joe Murray coming up on the sports hub.
Belgrin and Maz are just his pregame. They've been getting wholesale deals for years. It's Joe Murray on the Sports Hall. Ground out to first and a strikeout swinging in his second major league game. And a ground ball to third. It gets through the legs of Reyes. And Holiday is aboard to start the eighth inning. Pablo Reyes playing for the regular third baseman, Rafael Devers. Had that ball go right through the wickets. It's an E5, but the O's have the leadoff man on. Weissert is on to face Anthony Santander, who lines one down the right field side. That Play. Should have been an ending inning double play. And on the very first pitch, Tony Taylor sees it's his homer right down the right field line. In there, and he took one too many. Now he's going to argue that with a home plate up rehab. And he is going to be tossed out. Yeah. Yeah, I understand there's frustration there, but knowing where you are in this game. And like I said, Connor's still in it, and he can go to there, but now you've got to put a guy like Devers in at third, and we don't know what the situation is. Down to one. And as we mentioned, they've lost the DH. There's a drive out toward the monster, and gone! Two-run homer for Gunnar Henderson. Baltimore reclaims the lead. Oh, that ball is absolutely crushed. Make it two homers for Colton Kowser tonight. Santa Maria. They play the crank anchors. Bird still got them production skills, man. He sent it to me. I sent it to Skaz. Skaz put it together. Bing, bang, boom. The power of production. Back here on the night show. It's Joe Murray. Skaz is here as well. Skaz and I just had a nice off, <laughs> off the air conversation that I would like to dive into in a little bit. But just to recap, for those who uh, are just tuning in or maybe didn't hear all those highlights, the Red Sox tonight started out 2 nothing. They had Garrett Whitlock on the mound, who pitched very well. Five innings, four hits, one earned. Two walks, four strikeouts. He did give up a home run, 85 pitches. He's been great this season with a 1.26 ERA. Okay. Bullpen comes in. This kid Slayton gets the hold. Two innings. Played, pitched well. He's been good. Uh, Rodriguez comes in. Jolie Rodriguez. That's where things got a little interesting. Now, pause there. Let's bookmark that. Before the game tonight, Raphael Devers was held out of the lineup. He's still dealing with that shoulder injury. I don't know what they're going to... They got to do something with this one. They got to figure it out. And who's the other... They got another utility player that got injured too, right? Was Had a sling in his hand before the game. So they're down players. I think Raffaella played second center field. I, I, I don't know. Did he play everywhere today? I, I think he might have. So just remember that they had to go with Pablo Pablo Reyes today at third base, and they went back to David Hamilton at shortstop. So I just wanted to just mention that. Reese McGuire started the game at catcher. Okay? And at one point, Connor Wong was playing second base. Things got a little weird tonight. And it was a really just a mental breakdown of a poorly managed baseball team. That's the facts. A poorly managed baseball team. The manager will tell you this is the team that he's working with. But a manager should tell a player, Try not to get thrown out of the game arguing balls and strikes because there's no bench. How about that? How about the manager looking at people and holding them accountable? 
And when somebody misses a bag on a double play, where is the focus and awareness? You just got to the big leagues. Do the bare minimum. It's all I've asked for this year on the Red Sox. The bare minimum for us is to actually show up to work. We showed up, Chaz, Chaz, we show up to work, we log in, we authenticate, and we're on. We perform. We prepped for hours beforehand. We do the show. We adjust on the fly. Things happen. We do the bare minimum to get a show on the ground. Then we execute. These guys, where is the coaching? Where is the coach? Alex Cora played. I, I, how many years did Alex Cora play in Major League Baseball? Was a highly regarded infielder. His brother is one of the most highly regarded infielders. How is the infield defense this bad? How is it? I think the team sucks. I think they're just a bunch of guys. They're filler. That's all they are. But the manager, he can't coach this bunch up. He can't coach this bunch anymore. He is not the right fit for the Red Sox for this team anymore. He can't coach them. He can't manage. The The IQ of this team is so low for a manager who has managed really high IQ players to win championships, who's been a part of other World Series teams, who also been caught cheating before and was fired and missed the season. When it comes to this Red Sox team and what the Red Sox are, Alex Cora is no longer the answer. It's unfortunate. But for this team, they need a grinder out there. They need a fungo guy that's going to work with Hamilton at shortstop all day and make sure he touches that bag every single time. They're not working hard enough. They don't work hard enough. You cannot have a performance defensively for this team and tell me they're working hard. They're not working hard enough because the manager doesn't believe in them. Because he can't manage them. Would you like to add something, Skaz, that you said off the air that I think is a great point? I mean, I had a couple of them, I'm sure. But uh, no, <laughs> on Cora, for me, it's just, why is he here? He's he's in a lame duck year. He clearly knows he's going to get a job elsewhere, most likely. I think we all feel that way. And on a nightly basis, this team, we all know the talent on the roster. They're not a talented team. But that doesn't give Alex Cora an excuse for his team to have zero situational awareness, to suck at fielding year in and year out. That's on the manager. For to have your catcher get thrown out in a game and to have them constantly have base running errors, fielding errors, knowing how many outs there are, that's on the manager. And Alex Cora, I mean, it's not a small sample size anymore. The guy's been here for a while, and yes, the roster he has isn't good, but his job is to work with that roster and improve the situation, and he has done nothing to do that. He is not helping the situation any longer. What is the benefit for him being here? Do you think he's going to be here next year? No. No, no. neither do I. So no. why is he here this year? I, I, this is, to sum this up, hey, do you want to actually finish your points on what you said why he isn't a good manager? Well, yeah, because his team isn't loaded and he's not cheating. So, I mean, Alex Cora, look at his track record. Yeah, when he was with the Astros and with a loaded Sox team, he was great because guess what? They were cheating and the roster was loaded. Well, guess what? Now all eyes are on the Red Sox and the roster isn't that good. And Alex Cora has not been a good manager. It's just a fact. What has he done to improve this team? They constantly make mistakes. It's a nightly thing with this team. Who is your comp? And just to set you up on this one, you mentioned with uh, high IQ players he can really manage. 
Yeah, so my comp was he's almost Doc Rivers-esque in the fact that can he manage professional baseball players? Can he handle a big league roster? Yes, if they are a big league roster with actual MLB players. But in this situation where it's a bunch of guys grinding it out, trying to figure out how to win, how to even play Major League Baseball at this point, because I'm not sure the Red Sox know how to do that. It doesn't seem like Alex Cora has a grasp on that. And didn't Doc Rivers bail on Boston because he didn't want to go through a rebuild? Didn't want to go through a rebuild. Went to the Clippers who weren't rebuilding. Nope. And Alex Cora with a loaded roster, I will say, is better than Doc Rivers with a loaded roster. But that's kind of my comp for a guy who needs everything to be in place, then he can manage it. This is a team that doesn't have, I don't know, anything in place. And Alex Cora's job is to at least make them watchable. Make it so we have somewhat of a product on the field. And on a nightly basis, they can't field. They have no idea what's going on. And to me, that's on the manager. It's the first night I felt this way. I think Cora will move on next year, go to a good team, and be a good manager. I do. I I believe the guy can manage. I do. But he can't manage this. These these kids, these professional baseball players, they don't know situational baseball. The the awareness. You said situational awareness. I used used a good high high level word earlier. I'm trying to think of what you said. Yes, yeah, they just don't have any situational yeah, the, awareness. The situational awareness. Your catcher can't get thrown out. How how the hell does that happen? And oh. guess what? You know what else pissed me off too? The pitch was right down the middle. What are you arguing? You're the catcher. You should have some idea of the strike zone. But no, your catcher's getting tossed on a ball that was dead down the middle, basically. Can I give you one more? So it's the... Uh, what inning was it? Five, six, seven. Eight. Was it the ninth, eighth or ninth? No, it was start the ninth. Um, oh, the music. Kenley, the music. Kenley Jansen's music is playing. And Weissert is on the mountain to start the inning. What do you do? That's on the manager. Did he not communicate with Weissert? Did he not communicate with him? And what is the, the guy playing wild thing up there? Is he just up there? There's Jansen. We will not blame the sound guy on this program. <laughs> did, did the sound guy play Jansen's walkthrough music? He was like, even he was disagreeing with Corey. He's like, Weiser can't be on the mound right now. I'm firing the music up. <laughs> the, the music guy knows when to make pitching moves. The manager doesn't. This was a beautiful segment. <laughs> this was this was Marconi Award winning. He does. He's not the guy anymore. Listen, I know people want to defend Alex. Cor- the guy can manage. He can manage. This group of Red Sox, they need to be taught all over again. They need Tom Amansky Academy. Where's Brian Butterfield when you they, need him? They need they, for real. They need him. They they need a they need a grinder that wa- that carries a fungal bat everywhere he goes, or he's just watching a guy spitting seeds, being like, you know what? I think you should try to approach it this way. Or hey, when you make your throw here, why don't you step towards the bag instead of away from the bag? It will give you a little bit more room in front of the runner. Hey, or, how about you don't get tossed in the eighth inning when you're the catcher? How about when we're down? When you're down, Raphael Devers and another infielder. And by the way, you might have to put an injured pitcher into the game. Your catcher now plays second base. Yoshida went to left field. What position did Rafaela not play? Poor managing. It was fully on display tonight. Fully on display. And for me, it was an epiphany. This is not the guy. They're not going to get better this season with him as the manager. Unfortunately, these things come to a head in tonight. The literally the situational awareness, IQ, and execution of this team tonight shows the manager looks at the roster and says, This is what I have. I'm doing the best I can. He's not working hard enough with the guys. You'll hear about the Zoom meetings in the offseason and all this stuff. The vibe. The vibe in the locker room. All of that. It's slowly unraveling. This Devers thing, keep an eye on it. 
Why should he rush himself back? Why should Devers rush himself back for this? He got his paycheck. He knows that they're... They know, I know he wants to be out there. He does. I, I truly believe Devers wants to be out there and play with his teammates. But why force this shoulder injury right now? Why should he force it? To go out to play for this? It's it's upsetting, but I don't know. I don't think they're going to fire Cora. No, Joe, because then they'd have to pay somebody else, and they don't want to do that either. They need to think of another option. They need to get on it quick. They, they need some sort of, who do you want to be the manager to actually teach somebody how to field ground balls? You're at the major league level. This is just absolutely embarrassing. If this was going on in high school, college, the college level, Skaz, this doesn't happen in the college level. It just doesn't happen. These are major league players that are, are career minor leaguers. Like Pablo Reyes, Alex Cora said it himself. I don't think he's much of a major league player. You can't make an error in that spot. Hamilton, you're not a major league player. You know what? Ste- do the bare minimum and step on the bag. And then you give up the home run. Next- oh. Ben's in Brighton. Hey, Ben. Yeah, I think this Hamilton guy got to make more errors to get him out of here. I'm sorry, what? Hamilton guy got to make a bunch more errors so Alex hops to get him out of here. He got to get him out of here. Who, Hamilton or Cora? Hamilton. Well, Cora got to get Hamilton out of here so he know, makes do, more errors. Do you know why Hamilton? Understand to get him out of there. Do you know why Hamilton's here? No, he got to go back down no, to but, the minors. But do you know why he's here? Yeah, they don't have any place. To put, they don't have any players to put in his place. They have nobody else. Trevor Story got hurt. They banked on Trevor Story. They got to make a trade or something or just tank and get a good draft pick and hope you hit on it. They did that already with Marcel Meyer, who's and they, a guy who could play there, but they're choosing not to, which might be the right, right move. Yeah. 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 Anybody know L.A. Knight? Let me talk to you. Kind of went in on Alice Cora there, huh? Kind of went in on him. Somebody asked, what's Jackie Bradley doing? Is he still in the league? Where's Pokey Reese when you need him? <laughs> or Mike Lowell? No lettuce on pizza. Come on. People want food talk, not red talk. Sorry. That was a quality, quality segment right there, everybody. All right, one more before we go to break. Tim's in Lolly, Tim. I, I don't understand it. I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan. That coach is terrible. And so is the whole regime. I've been to St. Louis. I've been everywhere. They're terrible. I'm sorry. I agree with you. Who's next, though? You know what? I'm going to see if there's any odds. I want to look that up. You would think in a former player, I don't know. Next Red Sox manager. It's on the table. Yeah, p- epiphany time. Alex Cora is not the right guy for this team. I, I don't know why it took tonight for me to realize that. It's not the human being, Alex Cora. I know he's a baseball man. I know he is. I know Alex Cora is a baseball man. I believe that. I believe he'll go to another team next year. The team will be successful. He'll get the bag like Craig Council did this year. I I believe that. So everything I'm saying, it's about this team. He's not a good manager for this team. He's not the right manager for this team. There's just too many mental mistakes in things you should have learned in Little League. I don't want to call it bad news bears baseball, but right now the way that they are just the shrinkage that they have in tight games is just glaring. And the guy who's well, there it is. The guy chip stinks. All right. We'll take a break. Final headline of the night. Now. Sports up headlines. 
Celtics lose. Red Sox lose. BU lost.
Uh, just wanted to mention this Tom Brady thing real quick. Tom Brady in an interview asked, hey, would you ever come back? He's like, I don't know. I stay in shape for this stuff. The teams that were mentioned were the Patriots and the 49ers, etc. But I was thinking about this. Do I think Tom Brady could come back and still be an effective quarterback in the NFL? I do. But I feel like it would be like this random team. Like, remember Jordan retired twice. Wait, Jordan retired, came back, retired, came back. So Brady's already retired twice, right? So then one more time coming back and retiring would be like Michael Jordan. And I believe they have the same amount of championships, or does Brady have more? Brady's got seven. Brady has seven. Okay. Thank you. I don't know why. That should be ingrained in my brain for some reason. So Brady has seven. Jordan has six. Jordan played for who? The Wizards. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. Bad, bad. He was still good, but it was bad. If Brady came back, I think it would have to be for a playoff team. I just feel like it would be a really random. I'm talking spin the wheel. He did mention if he was an owner, he couldn't do that. So that was one of the things that he mentioned. But it ain't here, everybody. I'll tell you that much. But if you were projecting, Skaz, do you have a team? Well, I think the easy one is the 49ers. They've been there. They've gotten close. Purdy has been, you know, serviceable. I don't think he's as bad as some people do, but I also don't think he's as good as some people make it out to be. So, yeah, I think the number one at the list would have to be the 49ers. Any other team out there? The only other one that popped into my head, and it pains me to even say it, but someone that is – struggled with injuries late in seasons who has underperformed in the playoffs is the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts who I like and think can win but he's had his issues you know late in the year he had that hip thing and that's a loaded roster I cannot imagine Brady in a Philadelphia Eagles jersey but it would be a team like that with a loaded roster and a chance to win wow that's a good one there's not a ton of other, you know, loaded teams out there that have I mean, I don't even think Hurts is a question mark, but if you're just asking me to come up with someone, that's that's a team that popped in my head. What about the Miami Dolphins? Yeah, that that's another good one. I just I I think that's a tougher spot for Brady because of the division, because of who's in the AFC. I think if he's smart, which we know he is, and he picks his spot, the NFC is the easier road. Hmm. Trying to think of a random NFC team. It ain't the Bucks. I think the Rams are too far away. The Seahawks are too far away. Golf has been good with the Lions. Yeah, that ain't happening. The Bears. They're no, gonna. I mean, come not, on, they're Caleb. Not, they're, not compet- they're not competitive. 
You need a competitive team. Ooh, the Eagle Scabs, huh? Ooh. Oof. Good call. I'll see if there's odds. I already looked up odds for next Red Sox manager. I'll give you those <laughs> coming up here. Uh, on the other side, we'll wrap up the show here next on 98.5 The Sports Hub. You're listening to Joe. You're listening to
Sherlock and Bertrand get you through the midday. Jill Murray gets you right through the night. I actually spoke with women today on the Sports Hub. Do you want to give your take that you just said about Tom Brady? Yeah, I just uh, had a thought pop into my head. Aren't we having Tom Brady Day at Gillette Stadium this summer? We're going to honor Tom Brady, gets his whole day, potentially a statue, a jersey are, yes, retirement. Yes, the Patriots are having it, and they're inviting all the fans at a big price. So can you imagine that happens, and then five months later, whatever it is, Tom Brady steps foot back onto an NFL field? What if by chance he steps foot back into Gillette Stadium? I don't really see that happening, but him saying this doesn't, you know, rule that out. So I just think that's another funny little piece to this, that we could have Tom Brady Day, and it might not be the end of Tom Brady. Mm. Interesting. Well, they get the money's worth. That's for sure. Does uh, that mean we're going to have another Tom Brady Day? <laughs> another t- More Tom Brady Days! Uh, the This is unofficial. The Joe Murray odds for the next manager. I would have number one, Andrew Bailey. Former Giants manager Gabe Kapler. How about Mark?